Come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits? The Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. And and domination of your soul. And the afterlife, exactly. (laughs) Uh, These are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... Colin. What did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched... The prophecy. Ooh, not, the not, prophecy. Not yeah, prophecy. The prophecy. Yeah. The prophecy. The John Frankenheimer movie yeah. from the eighties. Okay. This was the okay. prophecy. There's a bit of a difference there. Yes. yes. <laughs> what year was this from? Uh it was unleashed upon the public in nineteen ninety five. Ninety five. Mm-hmm. Interesting time in movies. Right? Who directed this? Uh this is direct written and directed. By Gregory Wyden. Do we know Gre- Gregory Wyden? That's I name. think it's Wyden. Wyden? 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 How do we say in this? How do you spell uh, it? W- W-I-D-E-N. I'd say Wyden. Wyden. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, do we know this Gregory Wyden? You do. Uh, you know him as a writer because he also wrote the movie Highlander. Oh. All of a sudden you're like, wait a Previous second. Previous episode, Highlander. Wait a yes. second. <laughs> Um, in addition to that, mm-hmm. so Highlander, I guess he wrote as um, a thesis project, okay. um, screenwriting in college. But I think he, either he or his brother was a firefighter, and he turned that experience into the screenplay Backdraft. No, oh, wow, oh, the famous no Backdraft. Shit. <laughs> yeah. I have seen Backdraft a lot. I'm sure in your house with your dad. Is that your dad's favorite movie? My dad hates that movie. Oh, is it not accurate? Because he's a fireman and that movie's ridiculous. Oh, gotcha. Okay, all right. Yeah, he likes likes a movie that they are realistic with the fireman (laughs) activities. How does he feel about Kirk Cameron's Fireproof? I don't think he's ever <laughs> okay. seen that one. He likes uh, his favorite is Ladder Forty Nine. Gotcha. Oh, okay. okay. All right. All right. He says that's pretty close. Okay. okay. Right. Well, yeah. He, he approves that one. I need your dad's letterbox <laughs> list of all firefighter movies ranking. <laughs> is it right. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Like the the when they talk about the fire talking. Yeah. yeah. He pretty much gets up and leaves the room. Yeah, <laughs> like he can't yeah, even. Yeah. yeah. As soon as he sees them walking with their jacket open and no mask, yeah. he's like, I'm out. <laughs> he, he can't take it. He can't take it. Man, the, so the opening to Halloween Kills must be like a legitimate nightmare for him when he Michael Myers is going that. on the, all those fire, <laughs> yeah. fires, you know? Yeah. He would never watch that, but I imagine he'd have opinions. Do you think he would just be out in the movie immediately? Because that is the first scene of that, that movie. Do you think he would be scene? like, yeah, I'm, right. I'm out? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, none of this is realistic. I can't take it. I'm out. Yeah, I mean that's how I felt when I saw that. I know, like, right? Yeah, (laughs) yeah. See our episode in Halloween Kills. We all remember how we felt about that. Mm -hmm. Just not good. No, he doesn't like scary movies at all. So he wants nothing to do with horror at all. Has he seen the prophecy? No, I guarantee he hasn't. (laughs) Has he seen the prophecy too? Um, no, the closest he'll get, because this is a Christopher Walken movie, as we will talk about, mm. um, he'll watch Sleepy Hollow with me. Oh, oh good. Go. He that, likes Sleepy Hollow. Yeah. yeah he'll watch yeah. that with yeah. me. But that's about it. That's gotcha. like his limit of horror. Yeah. He doesn't well, do it. I mean, we, we said Highlander, right? Right. Uh, Are they a movie, still doing that remake? Is that um, still in the works with Henry Cavill, know. right? Was I think be... so. Right. He was cast because he was in The Witcher. Yeah. Right? He was like, he's okay, like so the he's fantasy be... guy now. I don't yeah. know what yeah. happened to that. I mean, we're getting a Crow remake, so it feels like yeah. Highlander is right there. Yeah. For I love that it's like, there can be only one, except we keep making them. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, anyway. man, who would be yeah. the Kurgan in... Oh, in a Highlander God. remake. It'd probably know. be like Jason Momoa, right? Right. I would yeah. think yeah. so. Or Dave Bautista. Oh, yeah. Dave, Dave Bautista, Bautista would be good. Yeah, yeah Dave Bautista would be good. Yeah. Or now Conor McGregor. Because <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's Irish. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's Irish. true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I can All see right. that. Time stamp this for when we're right in a year and a half. <laughs> <Gosh>. <laughs> I can't um, but uh, Highlander is a movie about uh, immortal warriors traveling through time. They're having a, a war uh, on Earth. And uh, right, it kind of sounds like that's the the bare bones plot for the prophecy. Yeah. <laughs> what was in the water in 1995? Um, okay, so there have been angels visiting Earth in movies before. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's a wonderful life, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you go right, back yeah. that far. Um, but this, to me, and maybe my cinematic, maybe I'm wrong, but. 
the idea of like the vengeful angel like the angels are always kind of portrayed as you know mm-hmm. um on the side of good mm-hmm. i suppose yeah. right um but the prophecy takes a different tact and says mm-hmm. okay they're these uh warrior angels that uh, are killers you know yeah well because i mean if you if you've studied the bible at all like the way angels are described in the bible they are like fearsome creatures mm-hmm. yeah. people fall down like dead in shock yeah from, from they're witnessing. like fiery big beings like they're terrifying mm. bunch of crazy eyes and yeah stuff it's- so if you're going for like accuracy mm-hmm. they probably would be more like this right yeah. honestly but i don't think i'd ever seen that before represented in a movie no people and, people like revisionist history of the bible yeah <laughs> but there is like at this time right uh, i mean i remember um there was a foreign film called wings of desire mm-hmm. yeah um about angels coming to earth and becoming mortal and then that we had a remake um city of angels yeah city with angels. al pacino yep. right that one was was a nicholas cage oh that one okay it was nope. a John Travolta. i'm thinking of angels in america Yep, different thing entirely. Cage, right? And Meg Ryan? Oh, City of yes. Angels. Yes, City of Angels. Yep. 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 I was doing the same yeah, thing. Yeah, I was like, Angels <laughs> in America. No, that's not it. Right? Yeah, yeah City it? of Angels. But John Travolta was an angel? Michael. Yeah, Michael. 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 Okay, that this movie, is, that movie yeah. needs to be talked about. I've, I've had it on my list for the freak show to bring, but that it's movie, a weird movie. That movie but, needs to be talked about. Okay, yeah, What? I think this is what you're getting at, Colin, but what was in the water that, like, in the late ni- mid to late 90s, we had this burst of, like, angel content. Yeah. Yeah. And more specifically, why did the uniform become like hoodie over trench coat, like trench right. coat over hoodie? Because so many movies do that. Michael does that. Like yeah. John Travolta has that. Yeah. Uh, Dogma. There was scenes yeah. in this movie that I was like, yep. this looks yeah, like do- how Dogma. the angels are dressed yeah. in Dogma. And, and it yeah. even like movie, like there's just Supernatural. Something- yeah. That's what they dress like. Yeah. like yeah. yeah, for sure. And even just like the central, like stylistically movies of yeah. this, but like the craft was very much yes. like with the crosses and the, the very, goth, yeah, thing. the goth thing, like very symbolic. Romeo and Juliet, yeah. like it's just very religious style the culture right yeah. now. Yeah, Do it's you, crazy. But even the year prior to this, The Crow came out, mm-hmm. and yeah. if I remember correctly, even though I had read the comic and knew what the, what the movie was about, it was basically a zombie coming back. The tagline on the poster, if you remember, for that movie. Was believe in angels, mm-hmm. yeah, right? Yeah, he's <laughs> he like was an avenging angel, right? as an yeah. avenging yeah. angel yeah. kind of character, and he also has that same uh, getup, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the um, the black trench coat kind of became, you know, like we said, I think before the cape mm-hmm. of superheroes became the trench coat, but it yeah. also gives you that flowing kind of. That's the wings. Yep. Right. So yeah. they all wear the trench coats because it gives them yeah. the length and, you know, and wings. And the hoodie is so that I, we blend in with the humans. Right. Like that's yeah. the casual yeah. part of it. Because we got to yeah. hide our wings yeah. underneath. The, or is uh, it like the hood is the halo? Yeah. Maybe. 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 I don't, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I don't What's know. What's the biblical? It's the robe. Yeah. The robe. Right. Yeah. That mm-hmm. uh, like the Jedi cloak. Mm-hmm. That, uh-huh. uh, yeah. Lots um, of robes. And Touched by yeah. Angels on TV at this point, too. Man, right. angel content is everywhere. Yeah, what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I, I the don't more I think know. about it, the more I th- examples I think yeah. of. It's wild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the response to the satanic panic. Yeah. <laughs> right. This was, so the 90s was right, where they, yeah. went, they yeah. swung the other way. Yeah. Into, you know, we're going we're gonna to bring <laughs> we, we uh, faith write, back into. We should put together the documentary about this because. This the timeline yeah. of yeah. spirituality mm-hmm. and society. Yeah. Yeah. And so then the horror guys were like, well, we can make angels scary. Mm-hmm. And then that led to, uh, I, n- I don't think I ever saw it. Um, Legion. Oh yeah, right. I have not watched it. Is Paul it. Bettany an angel? Yes. Okay, so that but that mm-hmm. some seemed but like, it's like yeah a prophecy mm-hmm. movie, right? When mm-hmm. that came out, but um, then there's the, the TV show too, but that's completely that's different. completely different. Is it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, because okay. I think the movie was about like uh, angels and demons okay. converging on a bar in the middle <laughs> of the okay, and Dennis Quaid's in it. Sure. Um, all the people stuck in the yeah okay sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> so maybe this is we don't know. Somebody out there is going to correct us. The is that, first is that like, Constantine movie, a devil movie. He's in it. The okay. devil shows yeah. up. Yeah. And so is uh, is Tilda Swinton Gabriel. I think so. In that movie, mm-hmm. also Winter's Tale. That is a secret angel movie. That's right. That's it's, right. It's not revealed until way late in the movie, and it, you find out Will Smith is the devil. Yeah, and well, he's wearing yeah. like band T-shirts, like ACDC yeah. shirts and stuff. Man, yeah. and I think he has a hoodie. 
uh, jacket combo in that movie I too. Mean, because why not? That yep. is the that is when Earthbound. Yeah, right. This is what the angels wear, you know, so they yep. can yeah. get on subway. Mm-hmm. So. Now, when I had to pretend to be an angel mm-hmm. um, <laughs> in Chicken I, Wire Hell, yeah, yes. um, I wore khakis and a white T-shirt. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> the casual business casual that angel. Was, yes, that was angel attire. <laughs> yeah, what the I white mean, T-shirt why, and khakis? Why aren't angels wearing all white? I know. It's a great question. I don't know. Why are they all in black in yeah. these movies? Like, what the... Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so we're saying that probably a lot of these folks didn't actually re-go, you know, attend their seminary school or whatever. They're <laughs> like, okay, there's a, something here that we can capitalize on and make a, a, a horror movie. Is it a horror movie? The Prophecy? Um, there's well, horror-ish elements. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> it's not science fiction. I guess you put it in the horror section, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. video store. It, it's it's like religious fantasy thriller horror. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. It would go next to like the Da Vinci Code, wherever that movie goes. Yeah. You know. Well, that's yeah. that'd be it would, thriller. It, Angels. It go. It would go next to Stigmata. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Stigmata. There's so also many of these movies. The End of yeah. days. Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. Oh, there's so okay. many. <laughs> so, but those were 2000, you know, yeah. like, uh, oh, or, yeah, or, those, that was 99, right? 99, uh, yeah. yeah, that was 99. Um, okay, so the other thing about this movie that um, kind of made it notable at the time was that um, it had this kind of sheen of respectability about it because of its cast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I can see that. The cast, least, like, looking, looking at it now, the cast is so fucking random. Mm-hmm. So random. But at least three of the people in it had been in Pulp Fiction the day the the year before. Right. Right? Because you have Eric Stoltz, uh-huh. uh, Christopher Walken, uh-huh. and Amanda Plummer yep. mm-hmm. are all in, in both. Uh it's so it's coming from Miramax who put out Pulp Fiction. Mm-hmm. So it, but it has like these indie actor like respected indie actors in it, I guess. Yeah. And it seems like, you know, you guys were just in Pulp Fiction. Mm-hmm. And now yeah. you're in the prophecy. We should go see the prophecy. It's a very different movie. Mm-hmm. Very um, very different. So what is the prophecy about? It's a good question. Is it? You just saw it. What's it's what's... a really good question. <laughs> um <laughs> Um. Yeah, there's things. There's a religious, ongoing religious war. Yeah, there's a second war in heaven. Yeah, yep. this is Angel World War Two. Yep. Okay, but why don't we know about Angel World War Two in the Bible? Uh, it's not talked about. It's but in like one tiny passage in the editor's edition of the Bible. Yeah, which is carried around by angel, an angel. Yeah, the angel you seal. You seal. Um, that's the one. Carries his own version of the Bible. I think they with all an have, extra chapter I think they in the Revelation. They, they all have their own like issued Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. which it's is kind of cute. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's pretty cute. Mm-hmm. So it's like they finish Angel School and they get their little Bible, yeah, right? Yeah. And <laughs> like, uh, which is the cult that I that I went to. Yeah. When you graduate your third year, you get your own little Bible with yeah. your name on it. So mm-hmm. it 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 checks. It, it checks. was like written yeah. in Latin or something. I think that uh, he's got. It's like hand An- illustrated. It's, yeah, it's like angel language symbols. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, our characters, right? So we've got, we're introduced to um, Eric Stoltz is in this movie yeah. as the angel Simon, who has yeah. come to earth and explains to us that um, there's a war in heaven and now, you know, it's it's come to earth, but here on earth they are mortal. Um, that's important, I think, right? Mm-hmm. Until the movie doesn't mm-hmm. care about that yes. anymore. Uh- <laughs> yeah, they have a purpose on earth. Okay, what's that yeah. purpose? Because they're they're not they're not here to stay. They're going back up to the angel war. They're just here to like recruit uh, a very specific. They're here to recruit souls, but a very specific soul. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Explain this to me. How is this going to help them win the war? That's a good question. Whose um, soul are they yeah. after? So they're after like the most evil son of a bitch soul there is that's ever lived. That's ever lived. Okay. Um, which I mean, he beat out a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's just like that one soul is being reused over and over again. And it's just like building up evil. Yep. Like it was Hitler. And now it's this guy. Mm. Yep. I don't know. Well, it does say, uh, cause there is a prophecy in the, uh, hitherto unknown 23rd chapter of the book of revelations that there will be a soul, the most evil soul that will consume other evil souls. And it is uh, a man, lieutenant, and it uh, and he is a warrior. That's all we're told. But through the course no, of ge- the movie, sergeant general, 
He's a colonel. Colonel. That's yeah. it. Yep, there it is. So I think yep. that's what's happened, right? Uh, um, Eric Stoltz has come to Earth, and somehow his detective angel has figured out that in the little town of Chimney Rock, um, Arizona, Arizona mm-hmm. there once lived a man, this colonel, yeah. uh, decorated, no, he's not, he's a, like a, 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 a forsaken army officer, right? Yeah. Who mm-hmm. fought during the Korean War. Yep. Mm-hmm. And resorted to cannibalism. Apparently, he's like the, he's America's Vlad Tepish. Yeah. yeah, he put people on on mm-hmm. steaks. Yeah, and he ate them. Mm-hmm. And so he's evil, and, and ripped their faces off. Yes, yep. and, and kept them in a box. Yep, like you do. Yeah, and he's uh, he has died he recently. Died. Yes. Yeah, just like died of old age. So yeah, just died. It's not and fair so for someone like that. Not fair. <laughs> and so we got to go get his soul. Yeah, because. Yeah, they got He's got to. Eric Stoltz got to get to it first because Gabriel is coming to look for the soul because that's like the like the secret weapon for mm-hmm. to win the angel war. Mm-hmm. So we're saying <laughs> the most evil spirit to ever exist is yeah, the, secret the secret weapon, weapon to win the angel war for both well, sides. Okay, I'm saying it now. This is just a two hour <laughs> version of Supernatural. It, uh, well, I was like, going to say Supernatural is, would not exist without this movie. Right. This is a two hour episode of Supernatural. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, they basically, there's yeah, a market for this. Yeah. And so obviously there's something to this concept because um, that probably outweighs the actual sum of the movie's parts because yeah. there was, and I counted them, five movie prophecy movies oh in God. total. Five. Three of which star Christopher Walken, that two of which went me. direct to video, and then there are two additional ones after that. Wow. That surprises me that he did three of them. I yeah. know. You're like, it's Christopher Walken. But I think Christopher Walken as an actor was one of those guys, especially during this period, who basically took anything that he was offered yeah. and uh, was probably saving up for retirement mm-hmm. or saving up for the extra house or, you know, more yeah. 16 mortgages. His, he had. I, mean, I don't know. His BMW Super Bowl commercial was really funny, I thought, actually. It was really Because I did think, man, it must be annoying to be Christopher Walken and people always do yeah. impressions at you. That must be <laughs> that so annoying. Yeah, yeah, that commercial was funny as fuck. But I could I, when I saw that, I was like, can this man rest? Like, like he's, why are you still working so hard, sir? Like, really, he's in Dune. He's in, yeah, Dune. 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 No, no, I know. It's like, it's sir, easy. You, you have earned retirement at this point. Like, it's just. He just loves the yeah. loves he just the work. Loves maybe. what he does. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's it. Maybe that's and why he worked so much back yeah. then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, this is his movie by far. Yeah. I yeah. Think, uh, no, he is the gem in this movie. But he is sure. not like the the main uh, protagonist. And maybe this is something that the movie has its script has is kind of like all over the map. Mm. Um. Well, first, before we move on, the reason that the angels have to get this guy's soul mm-hmm. uh, is explained to us later. That the apparently humans know more about uh, just being evil than angels do, and so if we can recruit this guy, mm-hmm. he can guide God's army. Which I mean, in theory, I would I would understand, but based on the actions that we see of Christopher Walken, yeah. I don't yeah. really believe that. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's very strange. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense. No. Because I think from a script point of view, you have to have a MacGuffin. Why are they? It's cool. There's a war in heaven. Mm-hmm. Angels yeah. come to earth. They're fighting for something. What? Mm-hmm. They have to find something yeah. on earth. And What's it going to be? Uh, how about an evil human soul? And everybody mm-hmm. yawns and goes like, yeah, rubber stamp. Let's do it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. There it is right there. That's it. There, there's my review. <laughs> so... Um, Eric Stoltz, even though he's in this movie, right? Um, he's Simon. He, and he's not the main character. He's not. Uh, he gets into a fight pretty early on with another angel and becomes mortally wounded. Mm-hmm. Um, and then somehow makes his way from wherever the movie starts. Is it New York? We never established. I, I don't think, think it's a big so. city. Yeah. But yeah, he gets into it with, with UCL. Yes. Right off the bat. Which we get our first, in- we get our first instance of like, angels sensing each other Mm -hmm. they can smell each other and they never really specify why or what that is yeah because they're like sniffing stuff and licking stuff sniff and they like automatically it's like a dog like you automatically just like catch the scent that felt very supernatural very there's a lot of sniffing in this movie a lot of sniffing licking and it just for the entire rest of the movie i kept thinking like what does an angel smell like Mm -hmm. well we had a hypothesis 
Mm-hmm. Because a coroner who uh, does a forensic study yeah. on the angel body determines that it's like a newborn. Mm-hmm. No, it's not. It's like an aborted fetus. Why not a newborn? I don't know. But mm-hmm. it is yeah. the blood composition of an aborted fetus. Yeah. And so then I'm like, well, maybe it uh, smells. They smell like newborn babies. Uh, yep. And sure. They, but they also have. Uh, Do you think a, they have really soft skin like a baby? Yeah. But, I think it's like tissue paper soft. Mm. Yeah, I think that's why they get uh, beaten up so easily. Yeah, maybe. they're also uh, perchers. They, they, like they perch. yeah, yeah. Uh, they all perch like gargoyles. Yeah, which is kind of weird. Cool, uh, yeah. but you but know, weird on construction yep. uh, signs and tombstones. Anything that you can perch on, mm-hmm. they, they perch just on. Perch. They have yeah. to kind of. They're called to it. Um, they um, also hermaphrodites. Turns mm-hmm. out that they're, they're, they're Which that being... is in uh, dogma as well. Yeah, hermaphrodites, mm-hmm. but n- the parts are not working. Just yep. to be clear, mm-hmm. not working parts. Yep. Um, just for show. <laughs> they so Simon makes his way to uh, Arizona, right? We don't know how uh, because he has got a lead somehow. You know, before the movie started, he figured out like this is what the other, the warring side is after. He's on the side of of the angels, right? He's on on uh, well, he's on God's side, right? Yeah. And he's the only, I think, uh, agent of orders. God that we follow. Uh, we find in this movie. The rest of them are all on the uh, the opposite side. They're they're jealous um, that humans mm-hmm. have um, or the talking monkeys have become uh, gotten into God's grace, mm-hmm. and he's throwing aside the angels for us. Mm-hmm. And so that's pissed off uh, a faction of them. There's a scene early on, right? Because our other main character that we're introduced to very early on is um, Father Thomas mm-hmm. Daggett. Yes. Um, he's going to be a priest, but he has a crisis of faith at the altar as he's about to be appointed and um, loses his faith, even yeah. though he sees too much, right? That's yeah. why he sees he the visions. war. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That leave him screaming in the middle of the church. It's yeah. probably not like a good way to get confirmed. No. Um, I it, mean, I agree. I think that's a good, that's a good reason to back down yeah. from being a priest. You're seeing visions of the holy war in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. yeah probably. I'd probably back out yep. too. And he then becomes a police detective. Like you do. Same thing. But that's yeah. where all the mentally unstable go to work, right? The police. <laughs> this is, yeah, dude, you can't. You, you couldn't keep it together for your ceremony, so we're going to give you a loaded gun and put you on the streets. Have fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, apparently he's a learned man. He uh, knows a bunch of... Uh, he wrote a book. He wrote a book on a treatise on um, angels. angels, right? Yep. So he's the perfect guy to, you know, assign yeah. to... He's like especially an angelologist. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he... Uh, is ha, receives a visit from Eric Stoltz. I think this scene is important because I had problems the rest of the movie yeah. trying to figure out what the significance of this meeting was. Yeah, I feel like this scene really... I mean, the beginning of the movie in itself is just kind of chaotic, but this scene really is like what set the track off course, mm-hmm. I think, for the rest it of the time. It derailed here, yeah, yes. It derailed here. And why? Be, the scene's not complete. It's like fragmented. A yeah. lot of the movie mm-hmm. is fragmented. A lot mm-hmm. of the movie. The editing yeah, is sure. weird. Yeah, um, which I can't tell like what's going on there. It, I would love to actually read like the original script to see what was intended. It definitely feels like someone telling a story and they're leaving out information because they think we know. Maybe. That's yeah. what it feels like. There was a lot in that particular scene that felt like 80 yard. Um, yeah, definitely. Which means for the, some of you that uh, they they cut the, the scene together and then they were like, in order to smooth over the logic gaps, we had to record additional dialogue to you know mm-hmm. make the scene make sense. But that's what it seems like because it feels like maybe that scene was supposed to appear later in the movie or something. Right. The reason it feels weird mm-hmm. is because Thomas, right? who has a Catholic experience, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, he knows the stuff about the Catholic faith. Mm-hmm. He was, he was almost a priest is confronted with an angel and it's kind of in his apartment. Mm-hmm. He pulls a gun on and has a conversation with, and then forgets about it for the rest of the movie. Yep. I, like, cause I was like, you know, you've actually seen an angel. You had a conversation with this strange guy in your apartment um, there's clues that show up later. Uh, um, he has a St. Christopher's medallion, 
and which shows up in a burn pile later and Daggett's like, oh, a clue. And I'm like, do you recognize that this is Simon? Right. That he's the angel that you spoke to earlier? Yeah. Also, Simon apparently takes uh, Tom, the book that Thomas authored back to his apartment, which is the scene of a uh, murder of the uh, mm-hmm. Uziel, uh, right? Mm-hmm. He should be putting two and two together. I met this angel. I guess he does later say Simon is a friend of mine to the little girl. He does, but I can't tell if that's... Um, if that's just a tool or if he remembers. <laughs> right. It's very odd. Uh, yeah. I think because we, we didn't get the entire scene. Anyway, Thomas is then on the case, right? Because there's a dead guy in the morgue that apparently is uh, an angel, mm-hmm. right? And so he's like, well, I got to go to um, um, Chimney Rock, right? And Bef- and the other person who's on the case is Christopher Walken, mm-hmm. right? Who shows up into the movie. Um, mm-hmm. His performance, right? Is is it at odds with everything around it? He's funny. His performance is the only thing that makes sense to me in this movie. Yeah, it, it cuts up a lot of the tension, I feel like, yeah. in a good way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because he's... Um, I don't know. He's acerbic. He's witty. Mm -hmm. Um, He's like this seen it all, done it all. Like, I'm just tired of all this. I want to get to the end. Mm -hmm. It does kind of feel he has that kind of weariness. Like, yeah. And he has all the best lines, you know, Mm -hmm. the reason you have that, um, you know, divot in your, under your, in your lip Mm -hmm. is because way back before you were born, I told you a secret and put my finger there and said, you know, um, and I like he, that he has mi- he has a minion, like a little like Renfield. Yeah. So what's mm-hmm. going on with that? Yeah, <laughs> I li- I I do like this. Mm-hmm. I, I like that. Um, I like the like synopsis of this character. Um, so basically, he finds someone who is about to die, <laughs> and he like interferes and stop them stops them from dying. He like slows it down so that they don't actually leave yet, <laughs> and then he makes them like his minion. So in this case, it's Adam Goldberg. Who has tried to commit suicide and Christopher Walken like put a pause on it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is actually kind of funny, right? I yeah. do, I do like this dynamic. It is because Adam Goldberg, um, who was in you know, another indie actor of the yeah. time, Dazed mm-hmm. and Confused, and yeah. all, um, he just is like, I want to die. You know, let mm-hmm. me die. And mm-hmm. I'm like, No, not yet. I have some work for you to do. And he's just so like, he's like, Soon, soon. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. like, Just do this one more thing for me, and then we'll, then I'll let you yeah. go. Yeah. Like, yeah. Stop whining! <laughs> like it's just it's funny. It's pretty cool. Um, and like later he ha- he recruits somebody else because uh, Adam Goldberg eventually, I guess you can still shoot him and he'll die. Yeah, I, I guess. I guess they're just like on the verge of death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So but again, like this is this movie's just very unclear because you know Simon gets hurt. I mean, I'm jumping ahead, but Simon gets hurt and then he does die. Where Christopher Walken gets hurt and he's not dying. Right. Like, it's it's not really clear what the rules are here. I couldn't tell if that was because, like, Gabriel is somehow more powerful. I but mean, why? he's an just because archangel. He's Ga- just cause, yeah, because he's Gabriel. But you would think becoming human would have, like, a, you know, uh, equalizing effect yeah. on all of the angels. But no, apparently, they still possess superpowers. Mm-hmm. Um, Gabriel can put a person to sleep. Just by saying hush, mm-hmm. right? Uh, they Sets can people on fire. Yeah. yeah, only angels. Uh, I mean, I feel like he could set anyone on fire, but I think that's just what he's doing. This yeah, is his mm-hmm. mission. He's burning all the angel evidence behind mm-hmm. them. Right. Um, I didn't understand why he said sent Jerry his minion to like go to the police records room for something when he just barges into the I know the morgue and torches right. Uziel's body. Yeah, I I don't understand. There's a lot that's unclear in this movie. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. So then um, all of our parties converge on uh, on this little town in Arizona. Mm-hmm. And we're introduced to another character. Virginia Madsen's in this yeah, movie. Yeah, which is. She, has, <laughs> she pops up in the most random places she sometimes. Does. Oh, Mm -hmm. that reminds me. Oh, Uh, she's on the wall. I was going to ask if she was on the wall now. Uh, Yeah. Thanks to MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show wall. Doing the Lord's work. Yes. Thank you, sir. (laughs) Uh, We're actually putting um, 
four people oh, wow. from this movie uh, into the okay. Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. But the first is Virginia Madsen because she was in this. Mm-hmm. Candyman? She was in Candyman. Mm-hmm. Ah. Yep. And she was in Dune, the oh, original right. David Lynch oh, Dune. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Eric Stoltz, uh, former oh, wow. <laughs> fired Marty McFly, yes. he yeah. is also on the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. Because he was in The Prophecy. Uh-huh. He was Anaconda. also in Anaconda. Anaconda. Okay. And The Fly 2, oh. which we also did on this show. Okay. Uh, J.C. Quinn, who was Burroughs in The Prophecy, was also in Maximum Overdrive and Days of Thunder. And Nick Gomez, who was Jason in The Prophecy, I'm sorry, I don't remember this no. character, mm-hmm. was also in Drive Angry and Looper. Nice. Okay. Wow. So at least okay. we got two folks going to the wall yeah. and two folks going to the hallway of uh, fame. So your uh, certificates are Fantastic. in the mail. Fantastic. Eric Stoltz has been injured. Um, and where does he take refuge? A school. And it's like an abandoned classroom. Yeah. yeah. Because we're told that this town was a former uh, mining hot spot and mm-hmm. has since um, the mine dried up. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's so, like a, it's like an old western town that's slowly shuddering. Yeah, you know, so it's a ghost town, almost. Yeah. Did you get western vibes out of this movie? It wanted to, it, yeah, but it didn't. Like, you can't just show me like a shot of like a Mesa and a Butte and call that a western movie. You know, you right. got to do a little bit more. But it was. Yeah. It was trying to plant that seed. But Michaela, seed. there were Pueblos. Yeah, exactly. It was like... <laughs> were the angels, the analogs of gunslingers all coming to the town? It's they like, could have been know. if it's they had a... done that. Like, yeah. that's yeah. That, that's how I would have made it. They were wearing movie. dusters. Yeah. But <laughs> I would have literally just made that's it reaching. a Western <laughs> with angels. Like, Western yeah. plus angels equals movie. You know? Yeah. Like, that's what I would have done. I did appreciate but... that... Um, What's his face? Casey Jones. What's his What's his name? Oh, Elias Cotillas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who plays Thomas? Thomas. Yeah. yeah. Um, I did appreciate that in New York he was like wearing a suit, and then when he went to Arizona, he was wearing a denim shirt. Yeah, yeah exactly. Was, yeah. Damn it, it's hot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Maybe I, I not official like business. No, it was because he's investigating. He's like, I got to go out there and yeah. find out. Yep. Look like a local. <laughs> <laughs> um, my khakis and my yeah. chambray shirt. And... So. In this one room classroom. No, it's uh, yeah, it's it's an abandoned high school where they just have like taken one little classroom and they're just using that for all the children. And all the grades. All the children. Yeah. And they're used to drifters just coming through and living in yeah, parts they're of just the school. Like, oh, it's that's, a normal occurrence. They're just like, Oh, that's normal. They don't hurt anybody usually. <laughs> It's like, that's what the police say it's like, yeah. we're tied up on the interstate there's an accident it's gonna be a couple hours before they will just shoot them they're probably harmless. there's like 20 people in this town and the cops still can't make it to help you out what is the point everyone's reaction to eric stoltz in this movie makes no sense they're just like it's, from he's the fine. get-go yeah. like when thomas comes into his apartment and he's just like perched on his desk chair he hardly questions why he's even there. Nope. He's just like, who are you? And then that's it. Once he starts talking, he doesn't ask any more questions. Mm-hmm. He's just like, all right, well, you're here. Let's just talk. And then the same thing. He's in this like abandoned school. This little girl comes in and she's like, hi, I'm Mary. And nothing, no fear there. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. I'd be terrified if I was a child. Yes. And then again, Mazin, she comes in and she's just like, you shouldn't be here. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. The little girl was sitting on his lap right. sharing lunch. Right. Like, you should be more upset. Mm-hmm. Okay. What is happening? I can explain this. Can you? Well, yes. But <laughs> hypothetically, All right. right? Your theories. Give because me your theories. My theory is this is the thing that's missing from the, the movie. This is the thing that was cut out was somehow because an effect didn't work or something mm-hmm. that the angels have when they talk to you. It's like you're hearing the voice of an angel, uh-huh. you know, and all of a sudden your 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 head is in the zap. Like yeah. you don't question it because yeah, you, just know, like, you know you're hearing yeah. an angel. Yeah. Okay. And somehow maybe they tried it in post and they're like, oh, fuck, this just isn't working. Why yeah. don't we just cut it out? Yeah. And that would kind of explain why everyone's so accepting of it. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. like that's those are the scenes that are missing or the shots yeah. that are missing in these scenes is like the people being put yeah. under the sway of like, listen to me. Yeah. That Brrr, would make sense. You know, and the light that, shines like down. The, like the voice in Dune. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That would make sense. It would add okay. some context to mm-hmm. this because it doesn't make sense in the grand scheme of things. I know. Yes. Now you're wondering, what, is that is that right? Is that what? Yeah. My, no. It make, it tracks. <laughs> like that makes sense because they all do. You're right. They all have that reaction of like uh, you know they're in awe of the presence of an angel, but 
It's just some dude. Right. You know, in the corner of a schoolroom. And it's like, they're not even in awe. They're just like, they're not reacting. Yeah. They go blank. It's like if I walked into a room and you were sitting there and I'm just like, it's Colin. Like, (laughs) like, there's no reaction. Yeah. Because they've been put in the zap of like, boom, I'm in the presence Mm -hmm. of it. Okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, Eric Stoltz. Okay. But in the Bible, you have a, like a big reaction to an angel. Yeah. yeah. Usually there's like a, a lot of does, light. It, yeah. it doesn't make sense. And, yeah. Like yeah. you're, you're just like crumbling in the presence of an angel. Like it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Anyway. All right. All right. We're going to have to read the original script to find out. So. <laughs> and um, the Bible, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Eric Stoltz, mm-hmm. uh, being the uh, point man on this reconnaissance yeah. mission, has somehow gotten to the chapel Which... where the evil Colonel Hawthorne is being buried for yeah. his memorial mm-hmm. service. Right. And what does he do? He makes out with the corpse, Colin, yep. because apparently that's how you retrieve a soul. You suck it out. You so suck gross. it out. Yeah. This movie, it was more gross than I remember. It really was. Like, it was... Just- I the, like the sound effects of like the jaw popping open and then the like sucking the soul out of the, all the mouths. It's so yeah, gross. A lot was... of shots of uh, spoiled food. Yes. Yeah. Ugh, maggots. Mag- maggots. Ugh. Gory aftermath Just of body things. bodies yeah. being dismembered and stuff like that. People yeah. licking stuff. Yep. Yeah. It was gross. Everybody's in very close quarters in this movie. Mm-hmm. Fingers and yeah. eyeball holes. Yep. For sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, one was yeah, gross. Yeah. Yep. That was really gross. Um... So this, of course, begs a theological question. Um, he's able to suck the soul out of a corpse. Um, yeah, why so is the, the soul still there? That, yes. that was going to be my question. So why is the soul still hanging out there? Like, does someone have to come get it? Is that like You'd protocol? think the most evil soul in the world would already be on to an ex-body, yeah. right? Because like, it's the most powerful one, right? Like, like, you would think that like someone would have claimed it like, yeah. right away. It just would have like popped out and mm-hmm. like, all right come home like something i don't know i just i I feel like i've always i've always been under the impression that (laughs) souls go somewhere immediately yeah (laughs) they don't just hang out yeah okay yeah so is this like a purgatory situation the movie explains this i I was paying attention there's exposition by uh the devil when he shows up later Mm -hmm. on yeah we're gonna Um, get to that that because of the war um all of the souls of everybody right. who dies he- have been closed. Molder- yeah, heaven yeah. is closed. Oh. Which is part of Supernatural. Yep. That, happens, yes. that happens in like season three. Yeah. <laughs> so all the all the the souls have been this is for the past like thousand years, apparently, oh, right? Mm-hmm. Are all remaining in the moldy earth, mm-hmm. right? Right. And they haven't been called one place or the other, but somehow some of them still go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. so because happens- hell's open even on Christmas. Oh, that's true. Yeah. 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 So what happens like if someone's cremated, their ashes like it stays with their ashes? Maybe this is answered in prophecy three or four or five. Maybe who knows? I don't know. See, this is an avenue for a sequel right there. Yep. Put Sean on the case for that one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know that's why it's too bad that he's not here tonight yeah. because I'm sure that he's seen all the prophecy sequels. Probably. <laughs> I myself made it as far as the second one. Mm. Oh. Um, just because it was on a double feature. That's as far as you made it, huh? Yep. Yeah. Um. So, Eric Stoltz now in possession of the soul, having yeah. sucked it out of the corpse. And one one thing that gets to me about this movie is. So Eric Stoltz, Simon, is supposed to be, like, on the good side of the angels, right? That's mm-hmm. what we're getting from this. Yet he is the creepiest motherfucker in this entire movie. Yes. And he's supposed to be the good angel. Creepiest mm-hmm. character in this movie. Because he basically propositions a young girl. Well, yep. the scene is done now in hindsight. To be fair, I didn't take it this way when I saw it in 1995. But reading it through a modern lens, it is very pedophile. Yeah, uh, extremely fantasy yeah. material. Yeah, um, extremely. Because he's hiding, he's wearing a you know trench coat, mm-hmm. and he's always holding it shut. So yes, yeah. it looks like he's about to flash. Yes, it, he know. does. Uh, it's because of his wound. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. The little girl, uh, Mary, uh, comes up there and he's like, I only have a little more time. And yeah. uh, that whole scene the whole, was yeah. like, from the, from <laughs> was the like start, whoa, from the start when he's like, what's your name? And she's yeah. like, Mary. And he's like, oh, that's a beautiful name. Yeah. Like, it's just oh, it's from bad. the get go. It's, it's disgusting. 
Yeah. And so the only way that he can, uh, so what's his, what's his plan? What's he going to do with this soul? He's dying. What's he going to yeah. do? Oh, he's going to put it in Mary. Yeah. And you put it in the same way you get it yep. out. Yep. It's so uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable. <laughs> I was hoping they were going to cut away. Yeah. And they, they did didn't. Not. They did they not. Could, they could have done Eric a set solid. Kisses that, which, was she like six? Yeah. Seven? Uh, she's very young. Yeah. Yeah. She's so little. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Full open mouth kiss with yeah. this child. So the idea Ugh, I'm so right. put off by this it's yeah right. mm-hmm. I know it, it did not play well no. <laughs> on this watch it was like I'm huh. horrified um but so the idea is that he has basically vomited this black soul up mm-hmm. into her now and now she is the carrier of the darkest soul on maybe planet that, earth <laughs> never mind. I was say, maybe that would have been more palatable if it was like a like a mother bird like baby bird situation where he's <laughs> yes. like regurgitating it yeah yeah <laughs> well i mean i assume if maybe you did it's this a little less disgusting than yeah. modern you know what you do i mean there is some computer generated uh, really yeah. bad computer generated stuff this is you know yeah the yeah. stone age of that it's but bad Nowadays, I'm sure you would have just that cloud of black. Oh, I'm sure. You know, yeah. Oh, like in Doctor black, Sleep, how yeah. they suck yeah. the mist out of them in Doctor Sleep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, which, huh, that movie is kind of like this, too. They're collecting all the souls to keep them alive yep. in that movie. But, um, <laughs> interesting. I lost mist. it. It'll come back. <laughs> collecting their mist. Yeah. yeah. Um, was it the mist? No, they called it something else. They called it, oh, uh, what did they call it? The, uh, I've just got the, spice yeah, on okay. the mind yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, spice. I don't know. <laughs> so he has now transferred the soul to Mary, little mm-hmm. girl, um, and that means that he can be expelled from the movie. So Christopher Walken immediately shows up, and these scenes, right, with Christopher Walken, um, are in many ways like some of the best parts of the movie because they are. this is where you get like the mythology, the myth mm-hmm. building. Yes. You get to understand. Gabriel's position, mm-hmm. you know, because I think this is where he's like, you know, uh, explaining that, you know, we used to be in his graces. We yeah. used to be like right we next the, to him. We were the favorites. Yeah. And, and then man was created. And Simon says, like, sometimes you're just not going to understand the plan. You, sometimes you just have to do as you you're told. To like orders, that is faith yeah. and that's love, you know. And uh, and Gabriel's like no, and so he kills uh, uh, Simon. Mm-hmm. And we we learn that you have to rip out the heart of the angel in order to kill it when it's on Earth. Did they do that to Uziel? I guess he did. He did. His mm-hmm. chest was all yep, ripped, yep. but I didn't actually see it. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. Well, this is good to know. You got to mm-hmm. tear the heart out. Yep. Um. So, Daggett, Thomas Daggett, doubting Thomas. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what. Okay. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> arrives in town and he's like on the case and he eventually figures out you know that it was this hawthorne guy was the world's worst soul that is what the angel actually he's slow at this right for being a detective right a detective who's already talked to the angel he's just yeah. way more behind than he should be because what is he's like he's like they're after a soul mm-hmm. so he knows that he has established that mary talked to simon and now simon is dead um, and uh, Virginia Madsen's like, what? Could they, what are they here for? And he's like, I don't know. Or what do they want? What do they want with Mary? I don't know. But he does know because he followed the clue of the circled yeah. article yeah. about the colonel. Like he knows why they're there. Yeah, it felt think- like these two actors were talking in completely different scenes from each other. Yeah, but it. Uh, what is happening in this scene? Are yeah, out of order or what? It, right. Yeah. There's a strange detour that I forgot about it's one of those scenes that you won't remember after you uh have seen this movie watching the home movies yeah no um no i remembered that i think that you know that's how we learned that colonel hawthorne is um yeah you know was a cannibal and all this other stuff there's a scene where they find that um gabriel has been squatting in the old abandoned mine right okay Mm -hmm. this like, the whole movie comes to a halt at this point. Right. Because it makes no sense. It's like Darth Vader in the cave. Mm-hmm. Like it makes no sense. It's just... What did we learn from... Why is the scene... This is why you'll forget it. Because why is the scene in the movie? To show the the angel war, I guess. Yeah, because they have that weird vision. Yeah. That they see looks it. like a matte painting. Yeah, they see yeah. The, the angel war. They see the angels on spikes and... Like the angel dying on its bike, mm-hmm. and yeah. Gabriel, right? 
because we're assuming this is where Gabriel and his uh, lackey have mm -hmm. been mm -hmm. hanging out. Mm -hmm. Why they sleep, I don't know. Because we usually see Gabriel perched somewhere waiting for the sun to come up and time mm -hmm. passes as he's just sitting there. So we're saying he went, sometimes he sleeps, I think, sometimes he goes back well, to the cave. I think Jerry cave. sleeps. And is it Jerry? So written? Jerry's been painting all the angel. No, he's script. he's painting while Jerry sleeps. <laughs> Shouldn't he be out looking for the whatever? Yeah, okay, no, this it is make, a, no, it makes no sense. Okay, yes, I agree no with sense. that. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we get the vision and we see the the, the all the dead mm -hmm. angels. Um, but basically, at this point, I believe that uh, and they, that's the only like service for the mine, right? Yeah, like that's pretty the much. only thing that yeah. we yeah, that's it. Because aren't they out of it in the next scene? Yeah, yeah, that was it. Um, there's a close quarters combat that occurs in a, uh, I believe it's Mary's grandmother's oh, the trailer, uh, trailer, mm -hmm. um, between Thomas and, and, uh, uh, and Gabriel mm -hmm. that yeah. ends with a big explosion. Mm -hmm. Well, before <laughs> I do like the scene before that, when Christopher Walken is trying to figure out which kid is mm. carrying the soul and he's like sitting there on the school stuff so all the kids he's like teaching him how to play a trumpet yeah looking yeah, at his their teeth. trumpet right? yeah. it blows out all the windows yeah. of the, that's yeah. that's great it's it's pretty funny mm -hmm. yeah remember your your maths kids it's <laughs> the key to the universe <laughs> He's good. I mean, yeah, like, I know. he is a big, bright, shining star yeah. in this movie. Yeah, it's amazing. It's funny. Um, so Gabriel is presumably killed, knocked out of commission. It's right. and then the movie becomes like a Terminator thing. Like it's always he's always going to keep following us. Mm -hmm. We know he's not really dead. The cops took him away, but yeah. you know, because the, yeah, at this point Mary starts doing the thing where she starts talking in like Colonel voice. Yeah, where she's like. We gotta kill them all. Yeah, you know they die better than anybody or whatever the fuck. Yeah, mm -hmm. she was like, "You gotta rip the heart out." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so her grandmother. Weird, oh, man. we we didn't say, but uh, she's a Native American, and yeah. so her grandmother has determined that she's already seen a doctor. Yeah, doctor didn't help. can't do shit. So mm -hmm. we gotta go and do the ancient ritual up yeah. on Old Woman Hill. Mm -hmm. If something like something that, like old, that. old Woman the Butte or something. <laughs> And uh, where there's a little Indian village, and that is where the climax of the movie is going to take In place. The Pueblo village. Yes, I love a Pueblo. <laughs> so um, our heroes, you know, right, running from uh, 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 Gabriel, uh, go up there in order to do this um, ritual, which is going to going to do something. They're trying to exercise yeah. her, I guess. Right. Which okay, yeah. if that's what they're trying to do. And she's possessed by the most evil soul to ever exist. Show me as her as a little kid being possessed by that uh, evil and right? fucking shit up and doing Do something, something cool. With it. Do Instead, something she's with just it. like in a trance. She's just like my stomach hurts. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I'm sorry, you're possessed by somebody who's worse than Hitler. Yeah, and it just makes your tummy upset. It's yeah, that's it. It in some ways it does feel like a lack of imagination on yeah. the part of because I think right one scene would even help, you know, just of her being like ridiculously violent or something for no yeah. reason, you know? Yeah, it's because like, try, I think they just I mean, said this would be extreme, but like try to cut off someone's face. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, that would make sense. It's just a MacGuffin. She's got yeah. The, yeah. the demon soul in her or whatever the soul in her and just don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah. You know. It's a She's kind of evil. She's cute, but she's kind of evil. So there's a an exorcism. Um, but it's at this point that um, the person that I totally forgot was in this movie shows up. Uh, Amanda Plummer. Oh no, 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 no. the other one. <laughs> the other yeah, one. well, yeah. I did forget about Amanda Plummer too. <laughs> she's the second lackey yeah. after. Yeah, after, but yeah, who shows up in this movie? Viggo Mortensen. Yeah, yeah, as Lucifer. Yeah. What do we think of Viggo Mortensen's Lucifers? If you're I ranking mean, cinematic I like him Lucifer. Lucifers, I like it. Yeah, I like him. This as is this feels like a go-to look for Lucifer too. Like, yeah, the long hair and the you know kind of just, just like sleazy. handsome but vaguely threatening. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He like a um, Russian mobster. Yeah, yeah. He does yeah. look. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. He whispers, which I thought was a good. Yeah. You know, it's like his take on it because I'm I'm assuming that's not direction. That was. What if I whisper? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it's creepier. Um, a lot of his hand gestures. He just he has like a there. He like tunes in to like you know I'm the devil. Um, I don't know. I mean, like is Al Pacino's devil like going to go down as like one of the all time? Like it's pretty the, ridiculous. It's There's pretty, a lot of yelling in that performance. Yeah, yeah that's the, that's the thing. Is like. <laughs> 
being that I've read through the Bible multiple times, I I appreciate the ones that go with the subtle devil because okay. that's the one that I think is more accurate and creepier yeah. and creepier. Like I, it makes sense. You'd want to be inconspicuous, and yes. if you really have all that power, you don't need to like flaunt it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, they're often like, always telling you, like, I can do this and that and that to yeah. you. It's like, why do you even care to tell this person that if they're so insignificant? You know. Well, it's just like yeah. that saying, money shouts, but wealth whispers. I yeah. feel like that's like demonic power that applies to as well. Like the guys who have a shred of it are the loudest about it, you, you know, and seen, he's the most powerful one. So he doesn't need to yell. Have you seen The Witches of Eastwick? Mm-hmm. Where yeah. Jack Nicholson yeah. is the devil. Um I don't know. I still like uh, Peter Stormare and uh, Stormare and uh, Constantine. I mm-hmm. thought his was his was a creepy fucker. It was really creepy. Um, this one's pretty good though. Mm-hmm. I, I yeah. like this devil. He's not in it very much, and at the end he gets to tempt you know them a little bit. Yeah. Uh, come on with me, you know. <laughs> Which actually I think is also a Peter Stormare's bit in uh, Constantine. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, like, say what you want about. Mel Gibson's portrayal or Mel Gibson's interpretation in his movie. Um, but I liked the subtle devil in the, in in the garden in that movie. Yeah. yeah. I remember that like, one. It was, it was a woman that played it, yeah. but with like the man's voice, but it was just very like quiet mm-hmm. and just like subtle. Yeah. It's I, almost I, spooky I, or sometimes. It was yeah. really spooky. Yeah, I, I thought was that like was a horror movie version mm-hmm. of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I thought that was solid. That's one of my favorite mm-hmm. yeah. portrayals. Um, this movie, I think, for the time, um, am I wrong about this? The idea that you would make the devil a heroic figure mm-hmm. was kind of, I don't know. To me, I remember when I saw it, I'm like, are we really doing this? We're making the devil the, <laughs> the right. good guy. I mean, now we do it all the time. But right. at that point in time, I don't know that we had done that in, in movies. Mm-hmm. Well, not so much that he's a good guy, but right. he his... It's the enemy of my enemy is my friend right. kind of thing where he's like, it can't be two hells. You know, basically, if Gabriel succeeds, heaven will become another hell. Yeah. And two hells is too many, mm-hmm. you know. So I'm interested in helping you defeat uh, Gabriel. Yeah. How? What's the secret weapon? How are we going to beat Gabriel? Take away his faith. Wasn't that it? This was very. I, I, I didn't understand <laughs> like, this. I think that didn't was it. quite follow this. He yes. gives uh, uh, Daggett a pep talk because um, I also don't know why he pro- approached Virginia Madsen. No, but no. it was funny just because we get that scene where she's just like, "I talked to the devil tonight," <laughs> and then they cut away. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. it. I'm like, "There's it. more to that, right?" right. And you cut it out. <laughs> That's just something you just casually say and then yeah. walk away. It's like that. That is the start well, of a whole it. conversation. Yeah. yeah, like I'm sorry. I know I have questions. Yes. Yeah, that was good. But it should, yeah, but there should have been more to it. Um, but that's how this whole movie is. The devil gives um, Daggett, right? Comes mm-hmm. up to Daggett, like, all of a sudden, and is like, uh, what's the one thing that an angel, you know, has to have? And, and I'm like, I don't know that I was following right. it. it Because he's, Daggett's like his faith. And like, yeah, if you shatter his faith, yeah. then, you know, that's your weapon. You know, and you're like, yeah. okay, I'm not entirely sure. So how's Daggett gonna gonna do this? Um, there is another subplot here that really doesn't go anywhere, but um, the Amanda Plummer character, like, he has to visit a uh, uh, Gabriel has to go to a hospital and wake her up at the moment of her death, which is like an amusing scene. Hi, you know, yeah. like, no, it's, it's funny. <laughs> and then there's that scene where they go to the diner. Yeah. And she's just all blubbering and all that. And while he's trying, he's all bloody and trying to ask for directions in order to get up to old woman Butte or whatever. Uh, But these scenes, they're amusing. And like I said, they are kind of in some ways Mm -hmm. the best part of the movie. Yeah. uh, But they're erroneous. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) To the movie itself. Yeah. Um, all right. It's very confusing because you're like, I like it, but also like, can we just move on? Yeah. Like it, it's, it's very confusing. Because why was Amanda Plummer in the movie? Well, it's the payoff to her character. There isn't. Mm-hmm. She apparently dies when they drive up. Yeah. And, uh, they and crash through a Pueblo and that's it. And she's out. And she's out. And she's out of the, yeah. 
Um, this is while the uh, the Indian ceremony is going on, right? Well, I was like, nearly killed everybody in that room by driving the, the car through there. I appreciate that none of them flinched. Right. Yeah. I know. <laughs> that was wild. Going. Just kept going. Mm-hmm. Um, That's fake. Interesting mm-hmm. that the movie, right. yeah, would choose uh, Native American uh, uh, mysticism or religion over uh, was, Catholicism in yeah. a movie about an award. Right. <laughs> It made no, that choice made no sense, but it was one of the few things I appreciated. Yeah, same. Boy, I was thought it was it an was, interesting choice. Yeah. It was interesting. interesting. Yeah. And, like, I always appreciate Native American representation. Right. Yeah, right. but I didn't yeah. understand it. I guess. No, it no. makes no sense. There was no yeah. explanation, really. It makes really. no sense at all. But yeah. there, yeah, it was, yeah. there were a lot of stuff, things about this movie. I'm like, interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's interesting. Interesting choice. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't understand it. Yeah. Not but sure okay. how that connects to the previous thing at all, yeah. but okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um... So, um, so how does Daggett defeat, um, uh, Gabriel? Like what is the, what's he, what's he do with, how's, how's he get him? It, that's a good question because I still don't entirely understand. He talks to him. He empathizes with he, him. He empathizes with him and is like, I, I, I understand why you feel this way, but I don't really see how he's like change or turning his face. No, I didn't get that I either. I don't no. understand. I see what they're trying to do because, you know, in hindsight, it's like, okay, they kind of laid this in. Daggett is a guy who wanted to be a priest who says that he heard God's voice. Uh, and then all of a sudden one day it was gone. Yeah. And he's like, I would rather it would, it would have been better never to hear that voice than to lose it. And so he's like, I share this with Gabriel. I know what you're feeling. You know, that you had been... God's love and then it was taken from you. Is yeah. That he's... Okay. But he's okay. basically trying to convince, I think, Gabriel that you're not on this holy crusade. You're just acting out of jealousy, mm-hmm. which then the devil shows up and says, yeah, basically jealousy is a sin. That's evil. That makes thing. you evil. Right. That's yeah. my department. That's my bag. <laughs> so uh, maybe uh, I, I don't know what Thomas actually uh, played into the ending because um, uh, right. Virginia Manson shoots him. That weakens him, and then the devil shows up and rips his heart out and eats it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> yeah. and 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 the devil like encourages the natives to like keep keep your chant going. Yeah. Yeah. Get that soul out of her because yeah. I need it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's mine. Okay. So, but so Lucifer down there in your basement, Christopher yep. Walken says. Uh, mm-hmm. um, gets the all these evil souls right yeah. apparently a soul that uh he knows from the angels uh could lead an army right because it's so evil and wicked mm-hmm. right but it's just gonna he's just gonna go to hell and hang out with lucifer i guess yeah. like the lucifer's not interested in taking things over i guess he just no. likes things status quo that's his deal yeah. he's just like eh, you know I, I like my my situation right now yeah all right I'm curious. I'm just making sure that we've got the logic of this all sorted out. Because it seemed like this was important. Right. That we have to get this he's soul. Got, he's got Castle Rock. He doesn't need King's Landing. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> and uh, so that, I guess, leaves the movie on a on a happy ending. Um, the, the soul has been vanquished. And the little girl is back to normal. The angel Gabriel is dead. The war is over. Mm-hmm. I guess. And... Uh, did they like become romantic at some point? Cause they're like hugging and he's like kissing her head. Yeah. I'm like, when did they become a couple? Did I miss that? I felt the same way. I was yeah. like, okay, it's I guess those, trauma are, bond. Are yeah, it's a trauma yeah. bond. Are they yeah. a family now? Like, I don't know. <laughs> right. I don't What's know. happening? He's right. a man. She's a woman. They're single. They got and nothing they're else going together. on. <laughs> they they yeah. went through, they shared this experience, the trauma bond. I can't Let's find logic goes. in that. Okay. <laughs> By that logic, Sean and I would date. <laughs> <laughs> that makes no sense. Well, you need a trauma bond. Well, being oh, on this show for trauma. this thing. We've both had the same, trauma. This, but it has to be the same trauma. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. yeah it there has to go. be. That's Remember, true. he's unaffected by a lot of the things we are traumatized by. So, yeah. you know. That's true. That's <laughs> true. All right. Well, uh, as we work out how to construct a trauma bond connection between <laughs> Holly and Sean, first of all, and we're going to recommend or not this movie. <laughs> we did make a pact to get married at some point if we're both single, but I feel like we settled on like like 90. Oh. 
<laughs> we're like, so let's still ways keep, to go let's on that keep one. it like really far out there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, that's, uh, yeah you, you get a little ways to go there. Yeah. yeah. Um, we put it pretty far out. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, ladies and germs, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Star of Brain Scan, as we learned last week. Holly, you weren't I'm here sorry. for this. Um, Igor was <laughs> in a movie and never told us. <laughs> really? Um, he answers the phone for Edward Furlong in Brain Scan. He literally what? is like Igor, like a smartphone, like c- program. Stop. Yeah. With a portrait of him and everything yeah. that says, Master, you have a phone call. Yeah. What? Yes. Igor was in a movie and didn't tell us. Is he on the wall now? I mean, well, I guess he should be, right? We're like, yeah, I mean, we haven't we, we haven't watched any of the Frankenstein movies. We watched, oh, no. yeah. yeah, we have, yeah, we yeah. did, yep. Well, that may not have been. Well, Igor yeah, but, might be on the wall. Yeah, yeah. you got to watch Brain Scan <laughs> yeah. for Igor. Yes, <laughs> Mister. Yes. Um, all right, we should let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show. By following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On X. At Sat Freak Show. By emailing us directly. Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo.com. Or following along on Instagram. And maybe threads. <laughs> at Sat- <laughs> Anybody on? Okay. Uh, at Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> um, about tonight's movie, James Mace writes in and says, Years and years ago in the 1990s, I showed this to a girl I was trying to date. I never got past second base, but I digress. Anyway, (laughs) she was raised Catholic, and it scared the hell out of her. She later said that she prayed all the way home. Oh my God. I was likely praying that evening too, but like I said, I never got an inch oh. past <laughs> no, I think now we understand why you only got second base. Yep. She was Catholic. <laughs> Mike Miller says, oh, great choice. Being raised Catholic, this is a type of religion-based <laughs> horror I love and appreciate. I think the casting is perfect across the board, especially with Walken giving a genuinely great performance before he became a parody of himself. And we get Elias Cotillas and Eric Stoltz along with Vigo, Cameos, Lucifer. Sign me the fuck up for that. I feel like this one is a bit underrated as a 90s horror pre-scream seems to get overlooked quite a bit but this is a solid movie that more people should see i love that we woke up the catholics with this one i know happy easter everybody yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> happy non-sploitation yeah. spring to you all yes this is, the, this yeah. is when the religious horror movies come yes. out. uh richard crotzer says great pick this week gang i've always loved this movie and i never thought it got enough attention there was five there's four sequels to this book. Uh, but anyway, Richard says there wasn't enough scenery for Christopher Walken to chew during this flick. Yeah. Such a great performance of Vigo's portrayal of Lucifer is right up there with Pacino mm-hmm. and Peter Stormare. Oh, there you go. Uh, Mike Welch says Vigo after prison, the movie prison, man, Fangoria had some killer coverage of this movie when it was called God's Army. That was That's a cool title. Under God's Army. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Travis Legler says, overall, this could be a lot of fun. Plus, for people like myself and Sean, there are four follow-up films. <laughs> Side question. Am I the only one who used to confuse Elias Cotillas with Christopher Maloney? For years, I thought that guy played Stabler, was also Casey Jones in Turtles 1, <laughs> and only in one because three makes some of us so angry to talk about. I, I can yeah. honestly say I've never confused those two. Now I'm going to think about it, though. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah. No, I know Casey Jones is always Casey Jones. Casey Jones, yeah. yeah 100%. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, uh, yeah, is El- Elias Cotillas on the, because we did um, uh, Fallen. Uh-huh. And didn't we do Turtles 1? Like, way back in the, were you guys I here for? I feel like you I was we did Turtles like 2. I did. I, we uh, did the one with Vanilla Ice, the coolest. That's the second that's one. The second, that's the second okay, one. Okay. We did the first. All right, anyway. Uh, we'll have to check. Michael Whitaker says, uh, this is a franchise that was famous for me because the trailers for the sequels were always playing before the various movies we'd rent as a family. And for the first time I was even aware of it existed was, uh, or no. And the first time I was even aware it existed was for prophecy Two. In fact, I think it was years before I managed to find the first prophecy playing on the sci-fi channel. I was actually convinced for a while the first one must have been lost or something. I don't even think the first one was in my video store. Wow. Really? That's crazy. Really? What, a, what an odyssey you went on to get the I first know. movie. Yeah. I mean, I, I was there when, when <laughs> Prophecy came out. I saw it in theaters. And it was all over the place. Then it was on video and you couldn't miss it. Then there were sequels. Uncle Colin, I was there. Yeah. <laughs> I lived it. 
Uh, last week we watched a movie called Brain Scan, and Justin Denny Hall says, well, we described, uh, I think Michaela did, that Brain Scan was found in the grocery store movie section. Yeah. He says, that's funny since that's the first place I saw this in the yes. rental section of a now-closed grocery store in my hometown when I was a child. That was called McKay's Market. No, yes. Okay, so they always had the main, like, two shelves of the really mainstream popular new releases, but then everything else was, was just random, random stuff. Random shit. With, yeah. Usually, it seemed like they just picked it based on the cool cover art. Because it was always had cool cover I think art. They pr- I think they but, bought stuff in bulk. Yeah. And, and so it was it just get, like, they would get, like, a... You know, like yeah. a big box would mm-hmm. be like, okay, you'll get these like three new ones. Yeah, you'll get two, one but copy then, of Titanic yeah. and, and then a copy of Jumanji. <laughs> and then you're yeah. going to get like a shit ton of, like, you know, like yeah. Night of the Demons shit. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Steve Carney says, wow, I had no idea. Oh, uh, we were talking about uh, T. Ryder Howard, uh, T. Ryder Smith, who played the trickster. Mm-hmm. in um brain scan well after the fact of we recorded the episode and i looked up like what else he had actually yeah. done uh he played sander cohen in the video game bioshock that oh a lot nice of folks are uh familiar with and steve carney says wow i had no idea he played sander cohen i love it when you discover actors from something a while ago that are still working albeit this is 94 to 2007 which isn't exactly recent but still um, that is always fun when you uncover little connections like that yeah, because he's like one of the main antagonists mm-hmm. of, of Bioshock. Uh, that's the trickster from Brain Scan. Mm-hmm. Thank you. That's why you listen to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the week before, we watched a movie called Sunshine. Yeah. Um, which stars Mark Strong as the villain, although you'll be uh, damned if you can actually find him in that movie. But Jacob Laws <laughs> says Mark Strong is great in everything he does, usually. He was great in Body of Lies as a Jordanian intelligence agent, his Sinestro in Robin Hood. The, huh. Um, what's that oh. kid's name? Who's a... Uh, uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and uh, Taman Taryn Edgerton. Taryn Edgerton. Oh, that kid. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> he had a, he had a great introduction in Zero Dark Thirty as the CIA chief chewing everyone out. Huh. Wasn't he also the antagonist in Sherlock Holmes? Is that yeah. Mark Strong? Uh, and Robert Downey. Yeah, I think yes. so. Yes. Yeah. And he was in. Um, Do you guys ever see Stardust? No. I love that movie. It's a fantasy movie. It's like it's kind of like Princess Bridey. Yeah. With but there's a star-studded cast yeah. it's like Michelle De Niro Pfeiffer, in that? Yeah. De Niro's in it. It's a fantastic movie. Yeah. But and Mark Strong is in it. Okay. It's, it's mm-hmm. really funny. It's really good. All right. Yeah. You should watch that. Well, yeah, you should like, watch that one. But should yeah. you watch the prophecy? Now you're going to find <laughs> out. Starting with Michaela, start us off. Um. So I knew I had seen this once before and I didn't remember much of it except for like a lot of the stuff in the first act, like the eye gouging and like the, I remembered the look of the movie more than like the plot so much. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage sometimes with movies like this because I do not have all the, um, like religious educational background that you have, Holly. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'm a little like remedial on this kind of (laughs) stuff because like, I don't know the the basics they're referencing so like i have they made them work. all up yeah that well that that uh bible verse yeah. about the angel that's right. not that's real that's not real, yeah. that's not real. Uh, <laughs> see i see i can't be on a religious who wants to be a millionaire i'll do so fucking terrible but it's you know i do like walk-ins performance and i do like some things about it but i just don't understand what the main thrust of the movie mm-hmm. was and it came it just it comes across as messy and it doesn't really work for me i wanted to see more of like the footage of the holy war going on because every time we got glimpses at that it was really cool it was really cool and some of it like the matte paintings and the little bit of like it looks like claymation stuff almost maybe some cg that made me think like what would sam raimi's like prophecy look like mm-hmm. and i would really like to see him do his full mm-hmm. weird thing with a movie like this um yeah i have a hard time getting into like religious centric stuff like this just like because i said i i'm it's, it's a lot of lore that I have to take in. Um, it's foreign to you. Yes, it is. Um, and I found this one just a little too dull for me. It, it did feel like a stretched out Supernatural, mm-hmm. especially those first like two seasons of Supernatural. That's really what this feels mm-hmm. like because they did not have a budget in those early seasons. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to pass on it, but it's like a soft pass. Like I don't hate this movie. I understand mm-hmm. why our, our listeners like it, but this is just not my flavor. So I'm going to pass on it. Holly, what do you think? Yeah, no, I I agree with you. I think I think you make some really good points. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like movies that have that like religious lore to it. 
because of my background. It's my jam. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like it. Um, but r- I like it, but I feel like I have found that it rarely does it for me. Like I, it's hard mm-hmm. for me to find a movie where I'm like, that's it. You're, you're scratching the itch for me on this one. Um, and I feel like this one is like most others that it does fall short. Mm-hmm. I think it could be really cool. And I would like to see a movie that goes just like full, like unhinged, like holy war. I think that'd be awesome. Um, like a big budget supernatural, <laughs> like that would be rad. Um, but yeah, I feel like this one does. It is messy. That's mm-hmm. that's exactly right. It's it's messy. It it doesn't make sense contextually. Like it doesn't make sense. There's the editing is really weird, or the script is really weird, or both. I can't tell what it is, but there are lots of things missing from this movie. It doesn't really make sense. I I don't hate it. It's not like offensively bad. Um, I was getting pretty sleepy though. Um, Christopher Walken, hands down the best part mm-hmm. of this movie. He's fantastic. Anytime he's on screen, it's great. I maybe if there was more of him, it would be better. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's he's wonderful. I, he's funny. Nobody's doing bad in this movie. Right. Like, everyone is doing fine. I don't. I'm not offended by anyone's performance. I think everyone's doing fine with what they have. Um, I think. Eric Stoltz character is really fucking weird and I don't like that. It's icky. Um, not sure where that came from. I, I I don't think that was a choice. I think that was, I think that was the way it was written and directed and yeah, I, it, that character is icky. I don't like it. Um, but, and I like Viggo Mortensen. I think his portrayal was really cool, but I don't, this movie didn't do it for me. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot missing. It could have been cool, but it fell short for me. So not offensive, but it didn't give me that crazy holy war that I wanted. I don't know if anything ever will, to be honest. Colin. Maybe prophecy too. I doubt it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. At some point he becomes like mortal because he obviously Gabriel's back and then in I the guess. third one he ascends because it's called Ascension. You know what? I, th- I think crazy. we found, you know, I found my mission for my next pick. I'm going to, I'm going to do a little research before, <laughs> All right. before my next pick. Oh boy. So okay. yeah, I'm going to pass on this, but it's a soft pass. It's not a hard pass. It's, it's not offensive. There was some fun stuff in it. Just didn't quite do it. Colin, take us home. I brought this movie because um, I've been complaining that uh, 90s movies, uh, specifically 90s horror movies, uh, all suck. And and, That claim uh, you've had for quite some time. Yes. And so um, I think this one also sucks. Well, okay. So here's the thing. (laughs) Um, So this is a movie where it has a concept, um, you know, that's one of those high concept movies. Uh, you pitch this idea and somebody's going to buy it and say, make that movie. Angels are at war and they come to earth. Right. And you've got Christopher Walken who agreed to do this movie. God bless him. Mm -hmm. Because if you were going to see it, that is the reason his Mm -hmm. portrayal of Gabriel is uh, nothing short of great. It's, he's mesmerizing when he's on screen. Uh, he's funny. He has interesting mm-hmm. things to say because he gets all the lore. His right? hair looks like a football helmet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yep. heavily uh-huh. dyed. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's pretty bad. Um, the, um, it's the plot. The plot, yeah. well, the plot is the problem number one. We got to go find the soul and it's hidden in a little girl. And you're like, oh no, we got to yeah. find the, the little girl with the thing that, you know, is going to save the world or destroy it. And it really never fleshes that out. Because mm-hmm. um, I, I was always kind of underwhelmed by the idea that, well, we're just going to make this colonel a colonel in, in, the, in the evil angel army. And you're like, this, this is how you're going to. I don't know. It seemed like it was short sighted on the imagination scale for what the concept is. And then I think the second pro. So it's like, okay, you got great concept. And then this pedestrian, um, you know, subplot. And then you have the editor and Mm -hmm. I know dimension films uh, at the time it was run by uh, Bob Weinstein, right? who I think is probably regretting the day that he was ever born a Weinstein, (laughs) but he had control of dimension 
And um, but Bob Weinstein was also a character. And I think if you go back and listen to our Phantoms episode, uh, it was where we talked about like the interference, or maybe it was Hellraiser Debtor or de- what? Uh, Hellworld. Hellworld, yeah. right? Because weren't we talking about like Bob Weinstein would? I think we talked about it in Phantoms too. Yeah, right. Doesn't he like he approves a movie yes. and you go off to shoot it and then he's watching the grosses of something that came out this week yep. and calls you up in the middle of the night as a director mm-hmm. and is like, you got to put polar bears in it. Yep. People really like polar bears. Yep. <laughs> you know, and you're like, what, Bob? What the fuck are mm-hmm. we? You know, and he would do that with Wes Craven, right? You know, so it didn't really matter who it was. Right. Um, Which but is this funny. movie kind of, and then you know he had. I think final cut and would mm-hmm. just, I don't know. This movie feels like it was edited with a chainsaw mm-hmm. and maybe you don't have that impression of it because you saw it a while ago. But mm-hmm. I mean, watching it tonight, it's like yeah. there might've been a movie there, but they hacked the living shit out of it. And uh-huh. what's left over makes no goddamn sense. Yes. It moves and you can go like, well, I know what they were all after and you know, all this other stuff, but I'm saying it's not really compelling. So, the question that I guess I was left with was, are the individual parts uh, worth actually recommending the movie? And um, I don't know. I mean, do you need to see it for, uh, you know, Christopher Walken's performance? I don't think so. I mean, like now, you know, I think if you watched it at the time, you know, you may have nostalgia for it, but it's not really a very good movie. I don't, I don't think I didn't, uh, even tonight I was like, Oh man, yeah. we're going to spend a lot of time on this plot. Like, I don't care. And it's not like, it's like an, Oh, you can't miss this Christopher Walken performance. Like we've seen. Yeah. It's, Cause right. it's he's, he's, he's doing it's Walken. Christopher Walken. Yeah, right. It's like, just amusing that he's the yeah. angel cape, you, right. know, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I, I um, it's, like I guess you guys are saying, it's a soft pass, you know, it's like not like avoid at all costs. It's just mm-hmm. like, you know, if you haven't seen it, do you need to actually check this one out? You know, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people will, though. I think they already did. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think personally, I didn't think it was a good movie. I think it falls short of being a good movie. I think mm-hmm. there's a lot of problems with it. And ultimately, those overshadowed uh, what I liked about it. Mm-hmm. So uh, that would be a pass. So unfortunately, that's uh, all three of us yeah. anti the prophecy, yes. which is kind of surprising based on mm-hmm. its cult um, reputation. Could you have uh, prophesied that? I was we would all pass. That <laughs> <in>? yeah. <laughs> uh, no, uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I couldn't. I just I kind of figured, but there we go. Um, next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by, Sean, does Mr. Sean have a proxy tonight? Yes. We're going to watch the butterfly effect. Oh, the butterfly effect. Okay. Went, uh, yeah. yeah. Ashton, the Ashton 70s Kutcher. show. Yeah. Yeah. Is Eric Stoltz in that one too? I, Isn't I he the he pedophile? Is. <laughs> is he? Am I wrong? He is. Oh my gosh. I'm pretty I think sure he is. I'm having a, a, a He has that a glass of whiskey that yeah. he's always drinking. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my God. Wow. Making Eric wow. Stoltz on, I guess. We didn't realize. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So it was my new mission to find a third one. You got it. All right. Well, next week it's the time travel adventure thriller. Horror. Yeah, he's, the, it might be a horror. Yeah. The <laughs> butterfly effect. Uh, we hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>